Hi, my name's Marty from Claremont.com. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to show and explain to you how to play blackjack. All the rudiments of the game, all the little things that you need to know like splitting and doubling. And we're going to have some lovely hand examples to help you to learn the game with us. In the game of blackjack, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get closer to 21 than the house. The good news is that you get the choice in making decisions. The house doesn't. The house will always, as it says on the table here, will always have to draw cards till 17 and will always have to stand on any total of 17 and above. By contrast, you yourself can choose when to take a card and when to stand. There are some other scenarios that we'll go through in some example hands here where you can increase your bets and potentially increase your winnings. These are called splitting, when a matching pair is split and you create new hands and new chances to win. And also doubling down, when your total of your first two cards is less than 11, you have there have the opportunity to what you call maybe buy a card, double down one card only, where you double your initial bet and you get just the one more card and hopefully you double up your winnings. You'll see examples of this in the hands that follow. Now the aim of the game, the perfect hand, is a blackjack. A blackjack is an ace with a 10 valued card, which gives you a total of 21 in two cards, which will be any other hand. And the really good news is with a blackjack, you don't get paid double, you get paid three to two. Have a look through the example hands and learn the game with us. Okay, here we go with an example hand for you. Three boxes being played. Let's deal the cards. Two, 10, eight, four for the house. Oh, matching pair there. Right, in this scenario, we've got the chance to split. You can split any matching pair. It's not compulsory, it's up to you if you wish to or not. Let's do it in this case. We've got a pair of twos. We will pull another stake down here and play them as two separate hands. Doubling the chance to win. Let's see what cards we get here. Seven and nine. Now we've spoken also about the opportunity in the game of blackjack of doubling down. Now if your first two cards are worth a total of 11 or less, you have the chance, if you wish to, to buy a card or to double down. In this case, you will double your initial bet here for one card only, if you wish to. Let's have a little look at the situation. You've got nine here. I'm gonna say we don't double down this stage. We'll just take a card. So it's card here. Your total goes to 19, that's very, very good. Here on 11, I think that's slightly better odds. It's good strategy, perhaps, to take a card on 11 as a double down. So you'd have to again put your bet down there. Four chips in this case, one card only, doubling down, and your total is 20. Moving across, 17, that's a good hand to stand on. 11 is another opportunity, should you wish to, to double down. Let's double down one more time and make this a very expansive hand. There we go, you've doubled down. In this scenario again, one card only when you double. 19 is the total. At this stage, you finish your decision making. We come over to the house. The house will draw cards until 17. When the house reaches 17, there'll be no more cards drawn. Eight, 14, the perfect scenario. The dealer has bust, fantastic. We go over 21, you get paid. Every single one of these bets is a winner. A lovely scenario for you players. You've had splits, you've had doubles. Every single bet is getting paid. That's the perfect hand for you. Here's another one. All right, four, 14, ace worth one or 11, remember? Three makes 12, we'll take a card. 16, we're gonna stay on that. A pair of threes, let's split them and see what happens. You can split any matching pair, it's not compulsory. Splitting the threes. Four 14's a card. 14, that's a lovely 21. Eight, 18, we're gonna stay on 18. 14's a card. That one, I'm afraid, is a bust. No more cards in, house will draw to 17. 16, that's a bust, the house has gone over. Everyone who's left in the hand gets paid a nice winning hand with a dealer bust. Right, let's play one more hand. Ace, six. Ace, two, blackjack, eight, and seven or 17. Now in a blackjack, I can't beat it here, so we're gonna pay it one and a half times, a lovely winning hand here, six chips. You don't win six, because it's a blackjack, you win one and a half, nine for a winning blackjack. Lovely winning hand, that one. Here, your total is eight or 18. Let's take a card. That's 17, let's stand. 
Here, tricky decision for you, seven or 17. You'll see a little bit later when we'll talk about some different strategies. Seven or 17, let's in this case say we're gonna stand. Dealer cards, five, six or 16, 19. The dealer has made a total of 17 or more. Sadly, in this case, it's a winner for the house. Insurance. Insurance is something you don't see too often in the casinos. It's a way of you insuring yourself against the dealer getting a blackjack and you losing all your money, all your chips in a hand. I've got a nice hand set up for you already. I know what's going to happen. Let's show you how insurance works. We'll do the cards out. 10, 8 and 9. Dealer card is the ace. 20, 10, 19. So 20, we're going to stand. No point splitting against the good card there. The ace. We're going to not double the 10, we're going to take a card. 18, we're going to stand. 19, no need to take any more cards. At this stage, what you can do is you can take insurance. Insurance means that you are insuring against me getting the blackjack, the next card being a 10 value and me beating you. What you're permitted to do, you're permitted to bet up to half of your original bet. On this line, the insurance line, you can see here, insurance, let's pull the cards back and show you. Insurance pays two to one. There we are. So anything you bet on the insurance line, I'm going to pay you two to one odds. So the player here can bet two. The player here has got 100. He can bet himself 50. The player on the end here can stick one on there if they want to. It's an optional bet the insurance. You don't need to do it if you don't feel like it. If in this case, the scenario, I pull the blackjack, which is a winning hand for the house, your original bets, they're all losers. The good news is because you've placed an insurance bet, we pay those out at two to one. That one pays back. That 50 pays 100, two to one odds. That one pays two. You've rescued a bad hand by playing the insurance. And if the insurance lost, there's every chance your original bet will win. So it's a nice little way of making sure you don't get too much damage if the dealer's got an ace as the first card. It's called playing insurance. It's an option. It's an option to limit how much you can lose, really. Let's play a lovely hand here. We're going to look at the opportunity that you get to change your bets during the hand to increase the amount of money you've got at the table, splitting and doubling. Let's see how it all works. Let's play out a nice hand for you. Three different boxes here. Let's deal the cards out. Eight, king and a two. House card a seven. A pair of eights, 19 and 11. Lots of options here for the player in the first box. He's got a pair of eights. What are his options? His options are to stand, to think 16's enough and hope that I bust. He can take a card, try and get near to 21. I think in this case, what you do, you split the eights. When you've got a matching pair, you can split them and play as two separate hands. Two chips is the bet. Two chips is how much you have to pay to play the split. So the next thing is, the cards get dealt to the eights. 18 and 17. Choices are to take a card, to stand. Both cases here, I think we stand on 17 and 18. This player 19, very good hand. Now then, what have we got here? We've got a lovely opportunity. Spoke to you before about the chance of doubling down, increasing your bets. Double down one card only is available to you if your first two cards add up to less than 11. It's a risky thing to do. What you're doing is you are doubling your initial bet, but you're only gonna get one more card. So let's double down on 11. Well, that's beautiful, that's 21 as well. It's a lovely looking hand. So the players have got 18, 17, 19 and 21. It's no more cards. What I'm now going to do, I'm going to deal the dealer cards until we make a total of 17 or more. 17. Let's have a look at the situation then. Fantastic hand for the players. 21. That's a winner that gets paid. 19 is a winner that gets paid. 17. That's called a push. A push is when the scores are level. We have the same uh, total, the player and the dealer. Nobody wins. The bet stays. The last hand is 18. That one's a winner. Now that's what I'd call a perfect hand. You've got splits, you've got double downs, you've got a push, and you've got the dealer paying out to the players. Cracking hand for you. Let's deal the next hand out then. Three, seven, four. Dealer card two. Seven, four, and a four. Very good hand, this one. We like this one. Opportunities here, the dealer card, as we may have spoken about before, if the dealer card is less than a seven, it's considered a weak card. If the dealer card is an eight or above, it's considered a strong card. Against the weak card, you're going to be taking more chances. Against the strong card, you're going to be a little bit more careful. Dealer card fairly weak, the two, middling to weak. So, so we've got the opportunity here. We've got less than 11 with the first two cards to double down one card only if we wish to. 
This hand here is now a 10. Should we take a chance? Should we double down? Let's try it and see how the hand works out. 10, double down against the two. An ace, that's perfect. That's 21. That hand cannot be beaten. Let's move along. Let's double down again. We've got 11 against the dealer two. Is this gonna be the dream hand, I wonder? If you're gonna double down, you double your original stake. 11 against the two, one card only. 21, that is fantastic. Now what we've got here, a pair of fours. Some people would split them, some people wouldn't. The option is there now, if we wish to, we can split the fours, play them as two hands. If we wish to, we can play it from the eight. In this case, I think maybe the more sensible course of action is just to take a card. Let's do that one. 10, 21, it's almost like I've set these cards up, isn't it? I haven't actually. It's a wonderful looking hand. 21, 21, 21, nobody can lose. It's a fantastic scenario. No more cards, the dealer will now draw to 17. Let's see how the hand finishes off. Two, five, 15, 16, 25. Dealer's bust, everyone's dream scenario. Dealer bust, a winner, a double down winner, another winner. Lots and lots of hands like this and you'll be having a great time at the blackjack table. Perfect. Right, let's play one more hand. Queen, 10, and a jack. House card is a seven. Blackjack, 20. 20, gosh, very easy for you players. If only every hand was as easy as this one. A blackjack against a seven, well I can't match it, so I'm gonna pay it. A blackjack, as I may have told you before, is not paid at evens. We play three to two. It's a lovely winning return. So instead of winning two chips, you win three. That's a blackjack, that's a lovely winning hand for you. Simple decisions here, isn't it? 20 and 20, no more cards. I'm gonna draw to 17, hopefully not to 21. 13, dealer bust, dealer bust, play a win. Let's pay these chips out. Another wonderful winning hand. I do hope that what we've taught you about the splitting, the doubling, a little bit of the tactics about when you should and shouldn't take a card have been really helpful to you in the game of Blackjack. Hope you enjoy your game, hope you have a successful time. Number one thing with all gaming, make sure you enjoy it. Mm -hmm.